Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. How do you make your own legacy blend of teas? What does that even mean? Well, this is something that I've been doing in my home for the past few years and I really, really love it. I think it's a great way to taste your teas. I've not seen it being talked about or being done out there, so I'm not sure if it's other people are doing it, but I thought I would share this technique with you. So what does it mean? Well, what it means is you're taking teas that you are drinking, so teas from your collection, and you're making your own personal blend of teas. It's similar to what's being done in whiskey with infinity bottles, where you basically take, uh, you, you know, the last bits of bottles of, of whiskey, or potentially you uh, take your, your collection and you start to make your own blend, uh, and then you continue to add whiskey to it. Um, as you drink through it, so the blend is forever changing. Well, this is similar, it's not quite the same thing <clears throat> because of course we're talking about leaves, but let me tell you and show you what I do and then I'm gonna taste a legacy blend that I have not tasted before and I'm so, so excited about that. So I've got some Paradise Snapper here. So you, it's up to you how you do this. You can either sort of pick off some leaves right at the beginning of, you know, when you open up a cake for the first time and put it away in a legacy blend or I like to sort of also just take my last, you know, when you get to this part of the, the cake, when you're really sort of reaching the end and you've got that sort of sad moment of, oh no, my last taste of Paradise Snapper. Don't worry, I've got loads. But you know, you know what I mean. You can uh, take off as much as you want for your last session and then you've got to look what's left over, break it up like this, <clears throat> and then you can add it to your legacy blend. So let's just take this as an example. I like to sort of always add about the same amount. So around sort of 15 to 20 grams, but I don't, I'm not really, you know, picky about it, but you know, a similar amount. So I have here my legacy blend number three, which I have not drunken yet. And I'm super excited. In here are about 11, I think yeah, it's 11 different teas uh, Shang Pua's from 2015 to 2020. I'll read you the list very shortly. And you can see that inside here, I've got a Bovida pack, 65% Bovida pack. That's optional. We'll talk about stories later. And inside here is a blend of 11 teas, soon to be 12. So I'm just going to make sure I break them up. Now, here's some tips if you're going to do your own legacy blend. First of all, Pick a container that, you know, is a suitable container. I've got a, a clay container here, but you can use anything you'd like. Obviously, you've got to think about whether or not you want it to be airtight or not. And we're going to be talking about the different types of tea that you can uh, use to make a legacy blend in a little bit. Um, so the, the material is up to you, but make sure that you don't overfill it and make sure you can put your hand in it because you're going to want to stir the legacy blend up before you brew. Obviously you want to mix up all of the different leaves so that you can hopefully get a little bit of each tea in your pot. So I'm going to add these leaves in and I would also say try to add you know whole leaves Obviously towards the end of the cake, you're gonna have a lot more of the dust. I tend to like cold brew this stuff because I think, you know, it's gonna make a delicious cold brew. Um, so I'll just take the sort of tops of it and just make sure that I sort of filter it with my hands a little bit. You can obviously throw all of the, um, the broken leaves in, but then they're all gonna to settle to the bottom. And so you're not, when you mix up your legacy blend, you're not gonna get a really sort of representative mix. So I'm gonna leave those to cold brew later. And then you can see it's important that you mix it up because you wanna to try to get, you know, a little bit of each tea in there. Now, normally what I would be doing is I would then put my Bovida pack in again, seal it up and I'd put it away and I'd leave it. Um, and, you know, I'd probably come back to it in about a few months time to taste it. But I just wanted to show you how I do it with, with uh, when I'm putting leaves in. So this is now my Legacy Blend 3. I'm gonna read out the roll call of the most incredible teas that are in here. And then I am gonna be tasting it. So making sure that you sort of put around the same amount of teas, uh, tea in terms of grammage in, is also a nice idea. 
it depends on how you want it. All of this stuff is completely up to you. And we'll talk about the sort of factors that you may want to consider in a little bit. But basically, this is what I do. Same sort of shape and, and, and size leaf and same um, sort of amounts of leaf as well. And you can take a look in here. Now I've got my lovely Legacy Blend. And what I like to do is I like to then, once my blend is complete, it's complete. I'm not going to... Uh, do what they do in whiskey, which is they keep drinking from their infinity bottle and then add more. You can, you can choose. You could make this an infinity blend where you're literally taking some out, you're brewing it, you're drinking it, and then when you've got another uh, raw pour or t different tea that you want to add to it, you can add more in and so the blend is forever changing. I personally like to sort of get to a point where I go, look, there's 12 teas in here or 10 teas in here or eight teas in here. The blend is great. Now I'm setting it aside and it's my legacy blend of these teas and I'm not gonna add to it or change it. So this is the first time that I'm tasting this uh, blend, but you can also obviously taste as you go. All of this is up to you. Um, the type of container that you pick is going to be mostly dependent, apart from what I said before, in terms of making sure that it doesn't get over full and you can put your hand in to, to mix it up. The type of container is going to be a little bit dependent on the type of tea that you are putting in your Legacy Blend. So let's talk about that. I think that obviously the types of tea that are really suited to Legacy Blends are teas which um, benefit from aging. So for example, Shang Pua and Shu Pua, so ripens tea or other Heicha, you could maybe mix different Heichas, you could mix some Shu Pua with different Liu Baos, you could do your own, you know, crazy Heicha mix. Uh, white tea obviously is a great option and we have got masses of white tea legacy blends. Uh, we also uh, use this technique when we are sampling tea. So for example, if I'm sampling tea and I've got a sample left over, um, which I really liked, maybe I ordered it or maybe I didn't, but it was very close to being something that I would have ordered. I'll throw it into a legacy blend and I'll just sort of write my list of like, you know, this was a, a Bing Dao, et cetera, et cetera, or a Jing Mai, you know, and I'll sort of write the names on it so that I have a recollection of what's in the blend, but it's a great way for us to make sure that we're not throwing away too much tea. We, we have to unfortunately throw away a lot of tea, but we're not throwing away too much tea, especially the tea that we really, really like. So Shang Pua, Shu Pua, Hei Cha in general, white tea, obviously, uh, they are all suitable for aging. Black teas and oolong teas, I think you can really do great stuff with legacy blends as well. I've not experimented too much with, um, with oolongs. I have done some uh, legacy blends with black teas and I think they are amazing as well. Hey, you could even do green teas if you really wanted. I don't think it really, um, they really benefit from aging much, but knock yourself out. You can go crazy. You can go wild in terms of your legacy blends. So decide the type of tea. Um, now, deciding how you're going to sort of characterize or categorize your legacy blend is again up to you. Maybe you're going to pick Shang Pua's of all around the same age range. So you're doing it by age. In here is 2015 to 2020. I don't want to put anything younger than 2020. I'm keeping it 2015 to, to 2020. You can also uh, do a legacy blend according to origin. Maybe you want to like just focus on West Side Sichuan Bana or you want to focus on Lin Sang. Uh, you could, as I said, mix up um, different HRs. You could take some Shu Pua and some Liu Bao and some uh, Fuzhou bricks. You could you could make your own legacy blend of HR. You know you could do that. You could uh, do it just by taste. So you you taste teas and you go ah oh, that's a little bit um, I don't know it's got a bit of a more earthy taste. That would really be a good contrast in my legacy blend. So you could be a little bit more particular about you know uh, putting in teas that you think are going to make a delicious blend of teas. What I like to do is to try to pick categories that um, allow me to have diversity. There's no point in, in putting in teas that all taste the same. You want to have enough diversity so that you, you're creating a complex brew that is completely unique 
to you. And that's the amazing thing about these blends is that there is no one on the planet that is gonna be able to taste this blend that you have created unless they come to your home. They can't purchase it. It is literally your own personal blend that represents your tea story. So I like to have enough variation, but not too much. So for example, I personally wouldn't start mixing up a Shang Pua with white tea or a Shang Pua with ripe tea. You certainly can, that's totally up to you. But for me, that's too far apart. I want to have enough of um, a similarity that I can create what I think is a very cohesive whole. You might wanna do it by producer or seller. So for example, you might want to do a blend of May leaf teas, uh, or you might want to mix up May leaf teas with other sellers. It's completely up to you. And you know, I hope that you're getting excited out there because it is a great way to just experiment and have fun and use those leaves that you know is the last amount of those leaves it's you you're gonna have one last session or two sessions why not keep it aside and create your legacy blend or as i said if you prefer you can of course just you know when you first open up a cake take off a big chunk uh, unravel it and put it in there so that it sort of is the first um pickings it's completely up to you um right i'm gonna tell you what's in this one in this one is, doo, 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 this is Legacy Blend 3. So I keep all my notes on my phone. So on here, the roll call, this has Canopy Flasher, Resin Temptress, Pip Killer, wow, an oldie but goodie, Pollen Provider, Nuzzle Diver, Nectar Raider, Night Forest Muse, Calamansi Swooper, Tub Highness, Snow Listener, Monocle Boss, Paradise Snapper. I mean, that is a roll call and a half of Mayleaf gems. So I'm super excited. As I said, it's been created over the past sort of couple of years with that 65% humidity pack, which I've never had to recharge. So it's still, you know, got, oh, it smells amazing. It's still got life to it, this um, humidity pack. I recommend in between sort of 55 and 65 is a good sort of humidity range. If you want to put a Bovida in, generally my home is sort of in the mid 50s anyway, but with these legacy blends, I like to just sort of control it perfectly. So are you gonna make your own legacy blend? Let me know what you're gonna do. I mean, as I said, we've got, we've got ripe tea legacy blends, uh, we've got white, tons of white tea legacy blends. We've got uh, uh, shungs which are from samples. We've got shungs which are from our own teas. We've got shungs which are a mix of um, sort of our teas and other teas, which I've sort of done according to more taste profile. So if I find one, like I've got one which is more like heavyweight, hardcore hitting teas. And so if I find a tea which has got that character, I'll throw in a bit into that one to make my sort of ultra heavyweight uh, blend. You can do all sorts. I mean, I'm just scratching the surface of what you can do. Right, let's uh, taste this tea for the first time. You never know what you're gonna get with a legacy blend, but in my experience is that it, as long as you're putting winning teas in, you're gonna get a winning blend. Uh, I would say be careful about putting a tea in which is very, very strong or particular flavor. Like I wouldn't put a smoked tea in to my black tea mix, for example, because the smoke will take over, you know, a lot. So that's up. That's completely up to you. That's my choice. I wouldn't do that. Um, and as I said, you can choose whether or not you're going to do it as a legacy blend or as a sort of infinity blend where you are just drinking through and adding more. I My preference is to go with a legacy blend. I think it's just, it's nice if you sort of create your blend and then fix it and then sort of, it becomes a tea that you then age and drink through. Okay, here we go. Let's get some of these leaves in, probably a bit too much in here. Yeah, that should do. Got my black gold niching pot. These precious leaves go back into the legacy blend. Oh, can't do that one handed. And the humidity pack goes back in and that can now sit 
and age further. Okay, here we go, everybody. Smelling the Legacy Blend number three, Shung. Ha ha ha. Wild, wild, wild. Okay, uh, impossible for me to start to pull all this apart. Uh, okay, lots of incense, uh, leathers. Uh, the incense is, is sweet and fruity, um, reminds me of pineapple, um, sort of a, a roasted or toasted pineal, slight, slightly scorched pineapple, pineal, uh, slightly scorched pineapple. I'm excited and it's a Friday night, forgive me. Um, uh, minerals, uh, I'm getting uh, some iron rich sort of sedimentary rocks, um, a little bit of sherbet. Uh, strawberry jam, cherry jam. Uh, the great thing about these legacy blends is that they just come at you with like a wild palette of flavors that you would never find in a single tea. Um, kiwi, very, very, very fruity, extremely fruity. Um, mastic ice cream. bit of custard. If I was going to do that uh, picture thing where I put uh, pictures around me uh, for uh, the tasting notes, then my face would just be a tiny square in the middle. So I'm not going to do that for this one. Um, no one is going to be able to try this unless they come to my home. And that is what I think is the great thing about these blends is it is totally, totally a completely 100% unique. I mean, all tea is unique. You never get, to, even from a cake, you're always getting slightly different leaves. But with these legacy blends, it is absolutely, totally yours. Uh, no one else is going to be able to taste this tea. Okay. Or anything like it. Oh, mad. Um, oh, non-food. Uh... Uh, some some sawn wood, the 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 slightly charred edge of a, of, of freshly cut wood. Uh, uh, something summer holidays, not the sun cream note that I always talk about, but uh, like the the vinyl um, sun loungers, you know, things you float on. I can't even think of what they're called, but you know, the vinyl. Uh, God, what are they called? You know what I mean. Um, oh, pomelo. Um, it's got a um, like a slightly snow wine, ice wine quality to it as well. It is mad leathers. Lots of leathers, fruits, and vinyl note. I wish I had time to just really sit and go through it, but you know, I'm conscious that there is a video rolling and your precious time that I must be thinking about, but there is so much, so much going on in that tea. The other great thing about legacy blends is, you, you know, they're going to create something wild. It might be too wild. It might be mad. It might be something that you don't actually like, you know, you, you, you don't actually love the blend. But still, I mean, you weren't really spending anything on it. You know, it was you were using 15, 20 grams of a tea that you already had. It's sort of I know you are spending money on it, but you know, what I mean, you're not sort of going out and investing a lot to make a completely crazy tea and you can create the most amazing tea. Some of the best aged white teas that I've, sessions I've had have come from just tasting legacy blends of like old jade stars mixed with like old, you know, Mudan Wongs and, you know, just samples and everything thrown in. Okay, cheers everybody. Legacy blend number three. texture thick but then it immediately goes juicy juicy fruits juicy um hmm ah oh, it's powerful in terms of it's just a, it's just a, a barrage of different flavors 
uh, I'm getting this sort of kiwi acidity, not not sourness, but but uh, um, a brightness. Those kiwis and pomelos, um, the um, pineapple again, but slightly charred pineapple. Oh, it's so good. Um, some syrups, like a dark agave syrup, dark brown muscovado sugar that moves into leathers, fruit leathers, and then moves into leather, like leather leather. Um, those rocks are there, but it's a weird thing to say, but they just taste matured. Like I know rocks are ancient, but it's got this minerality, but the minerality feels very, or tastes or s s the senses. I don't know, like I'm imagining like deep, deep down in a cave, like deep, 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 deep down, the rocks down there. It's very sort of um, deep, untouched by sort of sunlight. Um, I realize these tasting notes are going off piece, but I'm just shooting from the hip here. Um, a lovely bitterness that is as soon as you feel it, you know it's transforming. It's that quick. It's just, it it comes and goes, but it's almost, um, it reveals its sweetness even before it's arrived. It's like sweet and then, oh, is that going bitter? Yes, and then the bitterness goes to a sweetness that I would um, equate to juicy fruit chewing gum. childhood juicy fruit chewing gum sweet taffy like um in the in the finish bam the smell on this empty gong down bay talk about taffy candy pineapple taffy candy pineapple taiwanese pineapple cakes pineapple zone i mean if i was uh, naming this blend it would be definitely pineapple-y. So this is 2015. What was Snow Listener? Well, it was maybe younger. So sort of that age, that sort of age range, 2015 to 2020. So between three and eight years old. So sort of teenage years in you know in human years. Like it's sort of it's getting age, but it's not quite there. Um, color is very deep set golden. So as I said, you could decide whether or not you wanted to mix, you know, a, a, an age range that was quite particular, like three, four, five years difference, or if you wanted to go across the, the board and have like 20 years mixed with fresh. I personally wouldn't, but that's totally up to you. It could make a mind blowing blend, you know, not just in terms of taste, but also in terms of body sensation. Let's not forget the differences that all of these different ages and teas will have on body sensation. So I'm expecting a lovely Friday night. Oh my God, this is mad. Uh, that grapefruit skin. So that zest of that pomelo is coming through. Um, there is a note that I have not been able to nail yet, and that is that non-food note. It's sort of not vinyl and it's sort of not rock. It's something else. I'm gonna to have to try to sort of work it out. I'm gonna to to sort of flicker through a Rolodex of sort of materials in my head. But it's not coming to me now. Um, but it is a really lovely edge to this juicy, fruity, creamy, rocky uh, experience that, um, again, is quite unique. Oh, let's roll through them. Ooh, um, 
caper. Like you get a fresh book, a journal or something, and you just fan those, fan those pages, and you get that that paper or the smell of a bookshop. The smell of a bookshop, very very particular. Not like old library. The smell of a bookshop, fresh bookshop. That smell, I love that smell. When you walk into a bookshop, there's just something instantly comforting about the smell of a bookshop. You can see those leaves just starting to open up because this is a, you know, a legacy blend of heavyweight teas. I'm expecting a good 12 to 15 solid infusions out of this. What else could you do? You could do a legacy blend with, uh, you could do it on price point. So you could say, I only want like this sort of top echelon teas mixed together, or you might want to be a bit crazy and say, no, let's try and mix a whole wide range of um, price points. So, you know, the, the breadth of complexity is going to breathe according to how, you know, particular you are about your selection. And I think that that's really a fun thing for you to do. You look at your collection, see what you can do. As I said, I've done some great black tea blends and you don't have to age them. You can literally sort of blend them and drink them that year. You know, a legacy blend doesn't mean that it has to be something that is aged. It just sort of is more suited to aging because I can now leave this and I know that it's gonna change, but change probably in a really interesting and enjoyable way. Infusion number three, I think. Ooh, getting strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see you. I see you. And I don't mean that just in terms of taste. It's got this energy in the mouth. Uh, third infusion. It's, it's rocky and it's pulling. Um, and the taste has got a, a slight uh, acidity. Now I do mean a slight sourness in the uh, the back of my um, the back of my tongue. Nothing unenjoyable. It sort of adds to that kiwi note that I was talking about before. My stomach is is calling out saying, whoa, <laughs> this is a strong tea that you're putting in me. This has definitely got some potency to it. I wasn't going to um, give you body sensation on this. I was just gonna like taste it and then leave you and then drink through the night um, with this one. But I might pause and come back in, a, uh, in after a few infusions because I have a feeling that this is gonna be a pretty heavy weight bomb. Let's do that. I'll be back in a few infusions. Infusion number five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a Friday night drink. My face actually feels slightly numb around here for some reason. It's just like, it's it's got um, some medicinal potency to it that's sort of, it's so powerful that it has a sort of slightly sort of numbing sensation on my face, which is a bit strange. Um, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, I can still feel my face, but it just feels like, um, you know, it feels like, you know, if you put like a face mask on, not that I do that often, but you know, if you've ever had a face mask on that feeling where everything feels a bit like stiffer, like something's on my face. It's very, very sort of interesting feeling. And also it's, it's sort of, bubbly and rushy and and exciting and it's strong it's a strong 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 tea oh <laughs> it's all mine legacy blend number three i'm gonna treasure this one um it it tastes so good as well gooseberries mixed with um some maple syrup or gooseberries sprinkled with with uh, lots and lots of icing sugar so it's sweet it's very sweet in my mouth it's very fruity it's got a little bit of acidity it's got lots of minerality it's got leathers it's got um the the bookshop papery note it's got like so many different um facets to it and my mouth is pulling and and juicy and dry in spots and and 
it leaves me with this slightly minty did you hear my stomach it's going like crazy slightly minty apric uh, uh, caramelized apricot note in my mouth Stella Stella tea one of the best pours I've ever tasted and you can't buy it <laughs> I mean Stella Stella tea honestly the sensation in my in my on my face is just bizarre it's like you know uh, that tingling sensation that you get uh, some with some pours it's like that but even on my cheeks crazy sixth infusion I love this tea oh my gosh do it do it pick like your favorite teas make this blend I swear it is such a joy it is such a joy and as I said I haven't seen it being talked about like I I don't know if other people are doing it let me know if you've been doing this already like I've not really seen it around so you know I'm calling it legacy blends maybe there's another name for it out there and I haven't found it but why are you like leaving it up to the tea seller to make a blend for you because they're probably only going to be using fresh leaves or relatively fresh leaves. I mean fresh as in like like young uh, tea so you know Yes, you might get some people blending, you know, five-year-old teas, etc., or blending in between sort of those age ranges. But, you know, it's sort of unusual. You, you're mostly blending that year's harvest. So this way you can blend all of these different age ranges. You can get such incredible breadth and complexity in the tea that you're drinking. Right. I'm going to stop gushing and finish up. I'm going to drink uh, this last infusion. I mean, the flavor is just amazing and doesn't get any less amazing, even though we're on the sixth infusion, a, a dizziness in, in me, but like a lovely dizziness. I love it. I probably wouldn't want to go straight to work after this. Thankfully, I'm not going to be editing immediately after um, shooting this like I sometimes do. It's, it's, it's Friday evening here, so I'm sailing into fright into the weekend in a beautiful way here there are some other notes that's just hard carob maybe um i want to say there's a sort of a nut note to it but i can't work out what nut which nut it is maybe like um cycling through nuts maybe walnut is the closest but it's it's very light but it just somehow plays with all of these fruits in a really lovely way and that caramel you know syrupy note as well quick sniff of this one yeah super strong so so sweet now I'm getting it hazel uh, not hazelnuts walnut maple syrup pineapple Legacy blend number three, my new favorite tea. Absolutely love it. Do this yourself. Let me know how they turn out. Um, and, you know, let me know your own techniques. I'm still discovering how I can sort of blend all of this together. Share your techniques. Let's do this as a community. Who knows? Maybe we'll make a big enough legacy blends that we could actually start to, you know, uh, sell a little tasters or gift tasters to each other. That'd be cool, right? We could sort of, Every, the tea community could sort of create all of their own legacy blends and gift friends, you know, send out uh, legacy blends across the oceans to different tea lovers so that we can all experience, you know, your unique blend that represents your unique tea history and journey. That's it, tea heads. Check out other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the Revelation of Truth. I'm speaking very fast. Thank you for being a part of the Revelation of True Tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the completely unique stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.